Hey, hey guys, it's me, Priscilla. Now, I'm here today. I kind of talked about this on my personal channel, which is Wonderland Girl, if you haven't checked that out yet. Make sure you go and check it out. But on my other channel, I was talking about how I did a painting class for my church for the ladies' coffee chat. So it's, I picked out a pretty easy image from Pinterest that was related to spring and summer. And I did something very similar a couple months ago with a cardinals and a tree. Tweaked it around just a bit, but we are going to make this fun painting today. It's just springy and summery and it's got all these cute little birds. We um, we established at the coffee chat that they're whale birds. <laughs> You'll see that in a second. So I'm going to teach you how to make this very cute painting today. So let's go over supplies. I'm going to make my painting slightly a little bit larger than the one that I have. So this is a pack of two canvases. They're 16 by 20 inches and I bought them from Michaels. I need of course a paper plate to put your paints in and of course an assortment of brushes here are the colors I suggest you're gonna need a nice light blue for the background you need a pink for one of your birds yellow for one of your birds a red for one of your birds absolutely need a black and white and of course I'm gonna switch it up a little bit and make one of my birds purple but of course you guys can determine what colors you want to make your birds just you don't have to base the colors of your birds off of me but you, you just you know instead of using purple and you want to use a dark blue then you can here's a dark blue and you're gonna absolutely need a green and some water I have to rinse mine out <laughs> So I don't know if there's a special technique that you guys use, but basically all that I do is draw straight onto the canvas with my pencil. So when I'm looking at my birds, I have to go ahead and evenly place them throughout the entire canvas. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and maybe come down just a little bit from at the top. And you see, that's almost about mm, maybe two inches. After this, what I want to do is I'm going to make this big circle. So right now, it kind of looks like an ornament. All right, so I've got this circle. Now I want to evenly place the birds that they're almost relatively the same size. So now what I want to do is I'm just going to bring maybe a little bit of space in between. So that's probably maybe an inch or something. You can always use your pinky, but I don't know. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw that other circle. And I made him a little bit ovally. It doesn't matter what your birds look like. If they're too fat, they're too skinny, they don't look like mine, it's okay. These are just interpretive birds, okay? They're very abstract, so they don't have to actually look like birds. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here and then I draw another circle. And once again, don't worry about your pencil marks on the canvas, because guess what? We're gonna cover it up with paint anyways. So I've got this bird. Now, this is our chubby bird. Chubby bird, all right. Then I'm gonna jump over here and make a circle off to the side. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna draw a circle right underneath more of an oval shape than a circle <laughs> right underneath him so we have our chubby bird and then we have our four birds all right now let's piece these birds a little bit more together now this is why I said that they look like whale birds for each bird we're going to do this except our chubby bird so what I'm gonna do is I give it a tail so I give it a little tail on the first bird jump down to this one and I'm gonna go in the opposite direction. There's a little bird tail, little whale bird tail. Skip this one, and we're gonna go to this one, and we're gonna give him a little tail. So now they all look like whales. We're gonna switch that up just a bit. Now I'm gonna jump back up to my tail, and I'm gonna make the shapes of teardrops, doesn't matter what size they are. You can make it as big as you want, as little as you want. I prefer to make little, larger, and little. 
Now I'm gonna jump over here and do the exact same thing. And they're just teardrops, you, however you interpret them. If you don't even like these, you can come back and what you can do is you could just like paint over them or make them larger or smaller. It's up to you. That's what paints, paints miraculous and can cover up mistakes. So from this one, Mr. Chubby Bird, we're going to make a rectangle coming out of his butt. And it can vary in size. Does not matter what you make it. but you're just gonna make these triangle shapes. So I have one, two, three, three triangle shapes. Now jump down to our last bird. It's okay, mistakes. You wanna give yourself a little bit of room to draw your red bird's little tail. So I'm gonna bring up my chubby bird's tail a little bit more. There we go. And then my little red bird can have his tail. This is such a fun way to draw birds. It's always great, especially if you want to like paint this onto a greeting card that says happy birthday or something. That'll always be fun. The last thing we, we want to at least put on to our cute little birds is their legs and their beaks. So now I'm going to jump to this bird's face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a circle first, and then go out this way and make like a little cone. You see how it's just like, it's a circle and then a triangle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump down here and I'm just gonna make a triangle like this. Then for my, my good little friend Chubby Bird here, I'm gonna make another circle and a triangle once again. Then come down to our last bird and I'm gonna do the same thing like I did up with this one. He's just gonna have a little bit of a beak like that. Now your beaks can vary as well, it's up to your interpretation. Now I'm gonna jump up to the legs of our birds, and now I'm gonna draw one here, and a side there, and a side there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line there, and a line there. Standing on top of the bird's head. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for down here, Except I'm just gonna make little legs like that. And for this guy, not that much leg space going on, but if you wanna put like a little hint of his leg right back here, you can, but the entirety of his body is just kinda of taking up the bird. <laughs> um, all right, so down here, you're just gonna go ahead, make a little leg here, a little leg here, leg, leg. Ah, little whale bird, yay! Now, of course, what we wanna do is to go ahead and make our daisy. What I wanna do is I'm gonna go right off to the side of the bird. Here's a beak, and I'm just gonna lightly come over here, just trace like a little guideline. What I wanna do is I'm gonna make light. I'm gonna make a flat bit like this. And make a round bit like this. So it looks almost like those candies dots, or it looks like a sugar plum, basically. They're dancing around in your head. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna jump up here and make a little flower petal. And I'm gonna jump down here, make another little flower petal. Then of course I'm gonna jump back here, make another little flower petal, and I'm gonna jump in the middle and make this ginormous flower petal. Easy little flower petal. So from the bottom of my, from right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a squiggly line like that. Jump back up and mirror that squiggly line like that. All the way down to the bottom of the canvas. And of course, I'm gonna go right here in this curve, give it a little leaf. And at the bottom, I gave it another little leaf. So I have the bottom here, and I have the top up here. All right, so first color, of course, I'm going to use my light sky blue for my bag. I'm gonna use a lot of this, so it might take out the entire plate. Whoa. I'm gonna use a little bit of a wide brush just because I know that I can get in the crevices and everything for the little flying lines and stuff. And of course, it's gonna take up, a, it's gonna cover up a lot of space. 
I'm actually, the reason why I'm doing this tutorial is because there are two, um, two of my little friends. They couldn't come to the coffee chat. So this is actually for Morgan and Jackie. They're both cute little children's. <laughs> no, they're very talented little artists and I'm sad they couldn't make it. So I'm going to go ahead and do this tutorial for them. But I thought I would teach you guys as well. Now I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna paint the whole background. Do not paint your birds, the legs, or the daisy. So let's go ahead and paint the background. Oh, side note, if you get a chance, just so you don't have to come back to it, maybe when you get to the sides and everything, like the actual sides of the canvas, you might wanna go ahead and just bring that blue all the way around and we're just gonna make one coat of this actual background so make sure you go ahead and make it nice and even all over Alright, after I've waited for my background to dry, which is fairly dry, it's just a bit, a little damp in some places, I'm going to get my pink paint, or whatever color your first bird you want to pick out, you can go ahead and change up the colors, just apply the same technique like I said at the beginning. Um, we need a little bit of white. You can use whatever brush you prefer to use, but I'm going to use this wide set brush once again. I'm going to take a little bit of white, a little bit of pink, mix it together, and I'm going to apply this. This is my first layer to my first bird, so I've got this baby pink going on. And I'm going to apply this all over the first bird, and then we'll come back and we'll fill it in with a second coat after it's dry with just plain pink, no white involved. While I'm waiting for my pink bird to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna double task. So this is, means I'm gonna go ahead and take my yellow and take my white paint, just like the pink paint. So I'm gonna go ahead, mix a little bit of white and yellow, apply it to my second bird all over. I'm gonna take a little bit of a smaller tip brush and I'm gonna just grab that just pink and that's when I'm gonna go around and apply my second coat. Definitely looking like a vineyard vines whale at the moment. <laughs> it looks like a narwhal. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and apply this coat of paint. Another thing you probably want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of white while the pink is still pretty damp and I'm just going to go on top of my bird and apply a little bit of highlight to the top so I'm just blending this in. Just a little bit of a highlight. I'm going to do the same thing to the feathers while it's still damp, while the paint is still damp on the second layer of pink. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump down to our yellow bird and I'm gonna do the exact, almost the exact same thing that I did with the pink. That means I'm gonna just take plain yellow and cover the entire body of the yellow bird. Once again, I'm gonna grab a little bit of white paint while the paint is still damp on my yellow bird and I'm gonna apply that white highlight and just blend it in. When I was painting the yellow bird, I forgot to mention, I went up just because I'm already in the yellow. The, when I did the first layer of my first bird, of the yellow bird, I went ahead and I jumped up here and I just painted the first coat on my daisy just because I was already in the yellow paint so I thought I'd go ahead and do that and you want to do the exact same technique that you've been doing with the birds second coat of yellow and then a little bit of a white highlight on top now in the painting I showed you guys this is a dark blue bird but I'm going to make it a purple bird so I'm gonna grab a little bit of white and purple mix it together and I'm gonna do the exact same thing like I did with the pink and yellow birds just get that first layer and then jump down to my red bird 
and apply that first layer, you know, just multitasking, just because it's always nice for painting to just not stop and watch paint dry. There's always a point in time when you can go and apply different layers and everything and just multitasking. So you have, you're always staying busy when you're painting. And then our last bird is our little cardinal. So what I want to do is I'm going to do the exact same thing. Mix a little white, mix a little red, and get that first layer put on the bird. Now I'm going to jump back up to my purple bird and put on just plain purple. I'm going to put purple all over her. Once again, I'm going to take a little bit of my white paint and apply the highlight. Now this bird, the chubby bird, is a little bit different because the head is kind of sticking out to the side. So I'm going to apply a little bit of definition for this side. Now I'm going to jump to my red bird and just apply plain red to him as well. I'm going to take a little bit of green to our little daisy. Now I'm just going to go ahead and borrow a little bit of white off to the side, but just how like we did the, um, the birds, you're going to do it the same way. Just get that first layer going with the green and white, and you're just going to paint the stem and the leaves. While my stem and leaves are drying, I'm going to jump over to my daisy and put some white on the daisy petals just because I want to get rid of the pencil marks, but I just want it to be clean as well. While I left my stem and leaves to dry a little bit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab just plain green and I'm going to go around and apply it to all the things that I already made green. <laughs> For a little fun trick, what I want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of my dark blue and you want to do this while the leaves and the stem are still fairly damp. I'm going to take a more of a fine tip brush and I'm going to take a little bit of green and dark blue and you see how I have like this very aqua looking blue? This is what we're going to use instead of giving it highlights. I'm going to give my stem and leaves shadows so I'm going to go underneath. Now, I forgot to mention one color you absolutely need is orange. So I'm going to take a little bit of orange, the bird's beaks and legs. I'm going to take a little bit of white and orange and mix it together and we're going to give the beaks and the legs. Now I'm going to come back with a second coat of orange once I let I'm going to take my black paint, get a whole new paper plate or something to put your paint on and I'm going to get a very nice fine tip brush. So in my case it will be this one. I'm going to wet the paint just a little bit with some water. It doesn't have to be clean water because it's, it's black. So we're going to have a little fun with inking and what I'm going to do is I'm going to outline everything on my birds and the flower. Go around and outline everything before we fill in the details of the birds. You can just go ahead and have fun like you're outlining a comic or drawing or illustration or anything like that. And you just want to have fun with it. Don't stress over it too much and think, oh, my lines are too wobbly, they're too squiggly, they're not good enough. It's all right because this is more of an abstract painting than, of course, a realistic painting. And just totally... Another thing is, I want to talk about this bird. I'm going to separate the feathers from the body like all the other feathers are. So this part will be separate and his head will be separate. So just make sure you break up the, his feathers 
his body and his head. Alright, so let's get that black ready once again to go ahead and give our birds their details. So when I talk about details, I mean their wings and their eyes. And just give them little itty bitty eyes. So I have a little eye there, and then I have a little eye right here, and then I have an eye right here. I have an eye here as well. And it doesn't matter how big they are, you can make them as big as you want, you can make them as small as you want. It's all up to your interpretation. So let's go ahead and start with this bottom red bird. What I want to do is, remember how we made these, his little tail feathers? The wing is going to be almost the exact same thing, where I'm going to make a teardrop. that's curved upward like this. Now you could wing it like I just did or you could grab a pencil and sketch it on before you do that in case you're not as daring. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a little bit more black and I'm going to make a little lines. One line, two line, three line. So I make these three little lines. Now I'm gonna jump up to this bird which has no wings. He's just going to be plain. Now I'm going to jump to this bird, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a straight line diagonal across from his black eye, and then I'm going to go underneath that line and connect. So it almost looks like an orange slice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of his wing, make a line right here, and another line right here. Now I'm going to jump up to my top bird. And I'm almost going to do the exact same thing like I did right here, but I'm going to curve it just a little bit, and I'm going to go underneath that and give her her little, her little orange slice. Then I'm going to go inside this wing, make a line here, and make a line right here. Now I want to accent the daisy just a bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a black line right here in the inside of the petal. I'll make another black line right here. And then of course I'm going to make a black line on top right here. And then a black line on top right here. And inside the daisy, a black line. Now since these birds are not stacked up on each other at, for no reason at all, we're going to give them a little effect that it looks like they're shaking. Like they're wibbly wobbly getting ready to fall down. Wibbly wobbly timey wimey. Alright, so I'm going to jump on top of my pink bird. I'm going to give a line right here, and after the line, I'm going to make a little dot and another a even tinier dot behind that. Then I'm going to jump inside of the bird and make a line right here and make another little dot and another little dot. I'm going to give that little effect. I jump inside the yellow bird, make a line on top of his wing here, and another little bit on top of his wing. Then I'm going to go outside his tail feathers and make those wibbly wobbly marks. Then I'm going to go underneath him and give a little line above our purple bird. I'm going to jump to the back side of the bird. Purple bird. Two little dots like this. Another line going up this way and a little line behind that. Then I'm going to jump to my cardinal. Go underneath him give him a little line right there, a little line trailing behind him, little wibbly wobbly lines here, and on the other side of his tail feather. Then I'm going to go underneath him right here, give him a line underneath, and another line behind that as well. Now before I start with the white highlights, make sure your black goes ahead and dries. Alright, we are going to apply our last step, which is a couple of white highlights. Now I just got another little droplet of white on my separate paper plate with my black. I'm just going to go ahead and line the this. And then I'm going to jump the top of his beak. Feather and line the feather. I'm going to line these feathers as well to my yellow bird and line the top of his body, line his beak, 
outline his wing and then his little feathers back here. And then I'm going to jump to our purple bird and she is going to have a little white line here, a separate white line on her head, and then a white line right here on her beak. White line on all of her tail feathers. And jump to our cardinal and he's gonna have a little white line on his beak, white line on his body, his little wing, and of course, white line here, white line here line here as well. And I'm going to jump to our daisy leaves. Put a white line right on that leaf. Put another white line on top of the leaf. And jump to the bulb on the daisy. Put a white line up here. And then of course on every single bird we're going to add a little shine to every single one of their eyes. And there you go, there's a fun little tutorial on a spring painting. All of them together, all the little birds. Would be, this would be a great like gift to give to someone. Birthday, or just for the sake that it's spring, or it's summer, or if you're trapped inside and you need a fun craft to do, then this will be a lot of fun. Have a marvelous Friday. I feel like I'm in an angry bird mood because I just taught a tutorial on red from the movies ang from the movie Angry Birds. So I feel like this is just a birdie mood kind of a, a thing that's going on right now. But yeah guys, I hope to see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye! Hey guys, thank you so much for stopping by Dramatic Parrot today. Make sure you click on that subscribe button and hey, if you like this video today, make sure you hit that like button as well. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all the fun stuff and like my Facebook page. And if you haven't seen it already, I have started a vlog and vlog, vlog channel on Wonderland Girl. So make sure you go ahead and check that out and subscribe to that channel as well. Other than that, I will see y'all later. Bye!